2004 Chevrolet yeah. Silver Rado 4500 Heavy Duty Edition. Tell, because it does not have a regular hood. 6'6 Dirty Max with an Allison. It's a beast of a truck. Forgive me for chopping up the view. It's got uh, some advertisements on the front that I probably should not share on the interwebs. It's a company truck and whatnot. Big behemoth though, it does work. It is here for uh, various complaints and services. Look, DEF, DEF exhaust fluid. It's the Achilles heel of all modern diesels. If you have no urea, you have no exhaust system regeneration, and then your truck is not allowed to drive anymore. 57,117 miles on the odometer. I hear there's some warning messages going on with this thing. Let's fire it up. This reminds me of my dealership days. Change fuel filter, yes. Service brake, trailer brake system, yes. Service four wheel drive, service coolant. Wow, it's got all kinds of stuff wrong with it. Starting the engine. Whoa, that's, that was a stumbling startup. Needs washer fluid. This is sad. This Duramax here makes my Duramax over there look kind of small. I have diesel envy. Now we can see here on this menu, fuel filter life is 0%. We're almost out of def. My notes also say something about a um, ABS light that is on, so uh, it's not on right now. I'm gonna go drive it real quick and see if it does come on. Uh, we do have a traction control warning illuminator that is illuminated, but uh, no ABS. So let's uh, let's get this thing moving a little bit and see if we get uh, an ABS issue. Things like driving a building. All right, so far so good. No ABS light. Uh, if there is an ABS problem, uh, trouble codes will reveal that, so I'm gonna go ahead and swing back to the shop, and now uh, we're gonna get started on this. Next challenge is not crush the rampage. We don't wanna do that. Uh, that's good, that's good, okay. Forward. Full steam. Is it gonna fit? Yeah, it might, it might fit. the rare occasion when we get to pop an easy hood twice. There we go. Because this hood does not go up this way, it goes up this way. Again, hood lifting now. We had a check coolant level warning message. Let's uh, see if we have a coolant level problem. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Look at that, sideways caps. You know, these come in the uh, like 3,500 Silverados with the sideways cap, and I never understood why it was on the side. Does anyone know? I need to know. Come off, oh, that's reversed. Uh, I believe that's reverse threaded, I think. It's tight, I know that. Mm. Here, I'll just untighten it. Yeah, these are reverse threaded. Another, I don't know why they did that kind of maneuver. Okay, we got some aggressive bubbly action going on here. Maybe I'll uh, let this cool off and try again later. I think I'm doing this the hard way as from a usual protocol because we can clearly see that there is in fact coolant in this reservoir yet the warning message remains so suspecting that the float level sensor is faulty in this because that was also a common occurrence as per my recollection I'm just gonna go ahead and jump this wire closing the circuit don't do this unless you know what circuits it's appropriate to do it on and which ones it's not yeah, 99% time it's only going to be a two-wire sensor or circuit. 
switch. So now that that circuit's closed, let's key it back on and see if the low coolant warning message is still present. I'm locked out. Why am I locked out? Key on. Engine on. Change fuel filter. Low washer fluid. Na na na. Is that it? Is that all we get? Hood open. Yep. Okay, I am satisfied that the circuit is now functioning. Let's go disconnect the jumper wire just to prove that out. This is gonna kill you guys. I troll everyone. Okay, now that the wire has been disconnected, look at what we got. Low coolant level, add coolant. Yay. All right, that's good enough confirmation for me. Oddly enough, the track light came on. I wonder, <gasps> There's there it was, did you see it? There was that ABS light. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna shut this down. It detected the fault on this key cycle. Scan tool. So the real question is about to be, does my scan tool talk to the 4500s? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I've not had this on a medium duty truck yet. Okay, first off, doo -doo 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 -doo, and second off, it's really stupid loud out there, so we're, we're gonna hang out in here. Nice and quiet, like, let's see if automatic ID is gonna do its thing here. Can we talk to you or not? Nah. The VIN programs indicates this is a GMC truck, not a Chevrolet truck. Weird. Because that indicates that if this is a Chevrolet truck, <gasps> did they rebadge it to sell it under a different brand? No. Here, let's try GMC. Automatic ID number two. Mm, well, since it's not a Chevrolet, it must be a Sierra. So we're gonna pick Sierra four-wheel drive because this one is four-wheel drive. It's got all the bells and whistles. And we're rocking out a 6.6 Dirty Max. Not available as an option. Okay. Mm, why, why not? Why can't it be four-wheel drive? What would it, that doesn't make any sense because Sierra's coming four-wheel drive. Mm, uh oh, spaghetti -os. Oh, yeah, there it is. I found another Sierra. Maybe it's in here. Aha, L5P Dirty Max. Yep, turbo diesel. Let's see if the ECM has any stored DTCs. Yes, cruise control, fault, switch, U0121, lost comm with EVCM, electronic brake communication module. U0140, uh, lost comm with body control module. Okay, that's not good. Let's get into ABS and see what's hanging out in there. Codes menu. Again, some U codes, lost comm with BCM. Lost comm with ECM. These are in the same codes in a different module saying pretty much the same thing. We've got a C1445 system disabled, serial data invalid. Okay. Okie dokes, here's the deal. Here's where I'm at so far. Uh, I've gone ahead, we diagnosed, uh, well, we diagnosed the fuel filter warning light, diagnosed the low coolant thing. Uh, washer fluid should be self explanatory. We just add some more to it. Uh, we found module communication codes for the ABS and traction control uh, and trailer brake control module. Um, we're gonna wanna focus on the ABS situation first. Uh, that being said, I ran across the bulletin while I was looking through the DTCs and uh, found that we need to recheck for a current software update before we do anything uh, regarding uh, diagnostic. Um, there's a good chance that the, uh, the communication line uh, for the ABS module running to the BCM or the ECM uh, has uh, an intermittent fault in it. And I say that because uh, first we did not have an ABS uh, warning light and then all of a sudden uh, as we were sitting here the thing showed up. So I, I do believe it's fairly intermittent. Track lights on because there are stored trouble codes. If I were to clear those I believe that track light would go out. Um, having said that regarding diagging the ABS problem uh, in order to uh, 
to proceed with anything, as I stated a moment ago, oh, we have to verify that the current software calibration is up to date and accurate. I can't do that here. So uh, I'm kind of gonna back burner that one just for a moment. I'll, I'll let the guys know what I think we should do with it. But um, as for right now, I don't think I can really do much other than verifying power and ground of the ABS module, uh, which it does have. I went ahead and um, actuated the pump with the scan tool and uh, it, I heard the pump come on. So I do know we have a good solid power and ground to that module, which is also reinforcing uh, my opinion that there is a communication problem. Now that could be uh, in the wiring harness or it could be the actual electronic control board inside of the module itself. Those were very common failure points. Um, that being said, we're gonna move forward with the other stuff. Uh, they said something about a 60K service that would also include the fuel filter that they want, but uh, we need to address the front and rear differentials, the transfer case, Allison transmission, coolant, and then of course your fluids, that's gonna include your brake fluid and your power steering fluid and the engine oil. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and build out this estimate for these guys. Um, we'll go ahead and send it over to them and uh, I'll check back in with you guys when I get an update on what we're gonna do. So uh, until that moment arrives, which should be very soon because I'm not gonna make this two videos, we're just gonna go ahead and power this down. Beam. Or not. There. What do we got? What is this? Oh, I remember what this is for. For the car we're working on. Big truck. Cool. Let's go get it. Well, now we know for certain that I'm going to be doing that coolant bottle. I don't know what else is uh, on the list here. I have not checked the work order yet, but uh, let's go ahead and fire this thing up and get it into the shop. Okay, so like we mentioned before, this has a float level sensor fault in it. Uh, pretty common on these units. The sensor is not replaceable and not serviceable. You have to change the whole bottle and that's what we have ordered. So uh, what I'm going to do is evacuate the coolant out of this for a spill free replacement. Coolant machine powering on. Pneumatic. Okay, that is not doing what I want it to do. But that is. Okie dokes, we have a replacement surge tank, it's got the side filler and the top filler that bolts on like so, and of course the replacement level sensor right here. Let us lose these clamps. It's early. I'm not uh, I'm not fully functional yet. Check back in at 9:30. Come off. I'm gonna fire up the recovery machine again. There's still some coolant here and I wanna try to evacuate it before it all spills. Loud noises. It's not really loud, it's more annoying. Annoying noises. Sixty percent successful. Oh, more is coming out. What is this? Here, I'll just uh, let that ride for a while. Be back in a moment. Yeah, 
yeah, now we're getting somewhere. It's actually pulling it all into a vacuum. I'm gonna recover a whole bunch of coolants out of this. The machine is full. Time for some drainage. All righty, while this thing is uh, evacuating coolant, I can go ahead and unbolt this overflow bottle. Bolts are sneaky guys, there are two of them way back over here, I can't see them. I know that they're there, so I'll just poke around until I find them. Alrighty, so I need to slide this thing forward. It's got a pair of, uh, oh, I don't even know what you'd call it. It's got a pair of these uh, pegs, so to speak. See these little round guys up here? and they're fit into those grooves and I need to slide this assembly uh, this way in order to get it out but I can't because this uh, little junction block of thing right here is in the way so I'm going to remove this so I can slide this forward so I can pull it up out of those grooves then we can change it with the new one. I certainly did not expect to uh, have that occur. I didn't think I'd have to take something else off. That's okay. So what we do here. Hmm. Okay. Extension needed. Now can I reach? Sure. the old in with the new um i will have to reuse the uh the cap that goes on this bottle and a uh, fun fact for these duramax caps they are left-handed threads so if you ever need to replace one you have to get a gm cap connector click Bottle is secure. tight squeeze in there to get these nuts in. Hope you can see. The other one's even harder. It's farther away. Long range nut screwing. Get on there please. Come on now. and then we can refill this unit. Yeah, a couple gallons of propylene glycol and we should be good to go here. I think I removed about two gallons. It's gold, so you know it's good. Two away. Gallon two point five. Finishing up gallon uh, number three. 
3.5. Oh, too much spillage. Okay, let's go restart this and bring it up to temp. Restarting engine now. How about that coolant level warning light? Is it still here? Washer fluid, no. Hood, no. Coolant. Gallon 4.5. I don't think I'll get all the way through this gallon, though. No. Especially if I spill it all on the floor. You notice how this bottle is chambered. In some areas it's mixed, in some areas it is not. Let's go check the dash. And I think it's gone now, but we need to watch the level because we don't know if the thermostats are going to open up and it's going to draw in any more coolant. So we're going to let this thing hang out here and idle for a while. Uh, while it's doing that, I guess I can fill up the diesel exhaust fluid because it does only have 15% life left on the DEF. And if you don't put DEF in your diesel, it will shut you down and you don't get to drive anymore. Of course, that only applies to domestic vehicles. We can ship these things overseas all day long with zero emission stuff on them. No problem at all. But when they're sold here domestically, we gotta have all this extra nonsense. Yeah, too bad the standards cannot be applied evenly. Only selectively. Come here, funnel. Highly specialized death funnel. Glug glug, synthetic urine. Two and a half gallons in, almost. I have uh, one more box and that should put this tank at about 90% full. Okay, number two, coming in. It's bending. No, no, I need you to get in there, go straight. There, there, <laughs> there we got it. Bubbly. I think that's about it. Five gallons. Left handed threads. Considering that one of the many warning indicators in there is for low washer fluid, I guess we'll fill that up too. I want to get as many of the warning lights off as possible. It's also kind of silly, you can't fill that bottle up all the way. Because the nozzle is on the side. put this back empty so the next guy can refill it. All right, what do we got left? Diesel exhaust fluid level, okie dokie. Next, trans temp, yeah, trailer brake, yep, yep, units. Fuel filter, 0%, we are replacing that, so I'll just go ahead and reset that monitor right now. There's a new one on my box. Reset, yes. Oh, you know what? You gotta shut them down. And then restart. 
fuel filter life 100 percent there we go victory all right i'm gonna let this thing hang out and idle for a moment till it comes all the way up to temp and uh once that is done i'll recheck the coolant level then we'll go back down below into the frame rails and uh, replace that fuel filter down there okay it's been about 15 minutes looks like the level has stabilized let's go in there shut this thing down and then we'll get that uh, fuel filter changed down below that goes there powering down all right we're down here on the driver's side at the frame rail just behind the transfer case leave the fuel filters up here inside of the frame scooch that in as close as we can that's a gigantic transfer case this is kind of fatiguing doing on the ground laying on my side look 20 bucks On my face. Little splashings. Back up some here. There. Let's see how nasty this filter is at zero percent life. Huh, not very. Actually looks kind of new. Uh-oh. Look at the o-ring in there. Do you see that? That's not good. This thing wasn't filtering at all. Yeah, you can see that. See where it's like folded out? Ah, perfect. Right there. Let's get out of here real quick. Onion glove. Okay, Doug. So I got a new filter here. But, um, no. This is not enough filter. Not enough at all. We have the wrong stuff. I need to go order the right stuff. Be right back. Pardon me. You are pardoned. Huh? You like that? Yeah. Stainless. It's gonna be bougie coffee. Can't believe I just used that word. Long gone are the days of the Maxwell house from the percolator. Mmm, nitrogen infused frothy goodness. Oh, the frustration is mounting. Uh, well, a couple things I want to touch base on. Um, first, uh, the O-ring was not coming out. It actually sits in there at that weird, goofy angle. And second thing, after three wrong orders of this filter I have to put this filter back because now the filter is like special order and it's gonna take a couple days to get here because uh, I guess all the parts stores pulling up the VIN it brings us the filter that's the smaller size that is for the uh, like the one ton pickups and the three quarter ton pickups this is a much larger truck than that and consequently it's medium duty and it has that particular filter uh, yes it's got a part number on it we've crossed the part number a billion times um, nobody has one. It's one of those parts that are unobtainium. So, uh, so this thing has to go back in for right now. So uh, I, I guess we failed on that. But um, on the bright side is it actually doesn't look to be that terrible. Um, I, I think we can put this back for now. Uh, the car is going to stay until we get the right part, but I can't just have this truck disabled sticking out in the parking lot like this. So this thing has to go back. As it relates to the content of this video, I I guess that doesn't really matter much because we got to see a filter coming out and a filter going back in. So I suppose the operation is a success when you look at it from that point of view. See, that's the thing about life. Is it's, not, uh, it's not a black and white type of situation. There's often multiple different points of views on any particular given subject. The place where we fail as human beings is that uh, we don't understand that it's okay for other people to have a different point of view than yours because none of us are right and none of us are wrong 
we just have different life experiences. Ending philosophical rant now. Filter click. We're sorry due to fuel prices and logistical errors. Your component is on national back order. We don't have an update from the manufacturer for when they're going to restart production. All right, folks, all I gotta do now is just key this on a couple of times and uh, reprime the fuel system and of course check it for a leak. These have a lift pump in the tank, so they're not like the older diesels where you had to manually prime the system and then bleed the air out. It's a closed system and you just let the pump do the work for you. So a few key on cycles. And she should start, no problem. It lives. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap for this one, I think. As always, like, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know about it by tap tapping that like button down below. If you didn't enjoy this video, sorry, can't do a thing about that. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Warning. <laughs>